Tomorrow on Perspectives with Eric Reynolds, we hear from a civil rights activist who gives a first-hand account of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr.'s final days in April of 1968. Eric is here with us this morning to tell us all about it. And Eric, just a fascinating story that impacted so many lives, but this person in particular who you're speaking with was there to witness all these events unfold. She was indeed. She was a college student at the time involved in the civil rights movement with uh, SNCC as well as uh, SCLC. And she actually was there for supporting the sanitation workers. Mm -hmm. And so that was, of course, and it had taken place earlier than Dr. King came back. And so she was there that period of time early April, and then she was there at the just stirring speech that he gave that night before he was assassinated at uh, Charles Mason Temple Church. A packed crowd, thousands were there, and she describes it for us because she says that it was a very uh, stormy night, hmm. both the rain, the lightning, and the thunder, and in fact, she was telling me that on her record of the speech and the program that night, there are pauses when you can hear the actual sounds of the weather that night. Yeah. Just to, to be there, you know, everyone has heard the stories and seen it, but to actually be there in person is a whole different experience. And she was there that night, but she was also there the following day. That's right. And because of her involvement with the different uh, civil rights organizations, she was invited to be a part of the group that stopped by to see Dr. King at the Lorraine Motel. And as you remember the scene that we see where before the assassination, he's talking to mm -hmm. many distinguished civil rights leaders who we know of, and then others who were there in Memphis as a part of what was taking place. And so she had been invited for that, and she was there, and she says the sound was like a backfiring of a truck. And they all kind of looked around, and some people ducked. And when she looked up to the balcony, she could see that Dr. King had been knocked back and was falling. And so uh, she and others went up to see about him. I believe she said that only uh, Dr. Abernathy was up there at the moment when the shot came. I think what's fascinating is to hear her tell the story from her firsthand account of it, but not only the story of what happened and being there, but what this led to for her life's work after these events. I think that speaks volumes that we were talking earlier because the first immediate uh, responses for most of us was anger that this had happened, but she turned that into serving the community for years. She worked here in Mobile at a uh, community service agency uh, in several capacities and retired from there as an executive director. And she was also involved with the United Methodist Women's Organization in a national capacity. And so she gave of herself, her life, from the examples set by Dr. King. And um, just an amazing story. And I think I mentioned to you earlier that my cousin sent me an email about someone in Mobile who had been there. And so I played the clip and I said, my goodness, I know her. <laughs> <laughs> so this is someone who witnessed all these events and you knew this person for a long time, but you did not know that this was part of her history. Exactly, I had no idea. So in fact, when I called her, I asked her first, well, why you never yeah. mentioned this to me, especially with uh, the program and the news and those type of things. And she said, that's not something you just share because it still has an impact on her today and the trauma of being there. And so uh, she just never shared it. And the opportunity obviously wasn't there in the right time. And so, uh, but this turned out to be a great opportunity to hear from her, to uh, hear about what happened in the church, the sanitation workers and what the men there were fighting for. And some of the same things that people are fighting for today. You think about Bessemer, Alabama. And uh, for the folks who are unaware or mm -hmm. just don't know, the, the timing of this episode of Perspective coincides with being around the time of his That's death. correct. Yeah. Uh, this Saturday, of course, is the third. That would have been the date of when Dr. King spoke that night, and then the fourth being the day where he was assassinated. And so I thought it was great to have that perspective around this time where she could share about then as well as now, as well as uh, give us some insight into those last days. A remarkable story. You can hear it only on Perspectives. That is tomorrow morning with Eric Reynolds, and we can 
Watch it when? That's right, tomorrow morning, 9 o'clock, right here on Fox 10. And of course, if you miss it, and I beg you to make sure you take time to check it out on our website or our YouTube channel to hear these words. All right, great yeah. stuff, Eric. Thanks for sharing this and, and getting her to share her story because it is a very powerful one and one that folks will want to listen to. All right, Gianni.